grace and mercy and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. These words from Jesus Christ in our gospel reading. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. There are some experiences in our life that we never forget. I had such an occasion like that back in 1999. Seems like a long time ago, but in some ways it seemed just like yesterday. You see, it was my first trip to Israel. I was excited. There was a hundred and some people from this area going to Israel to see the Holy Land. It was not called a vacation. It was called a pilgrimage because you're up every morning at 6 o'clock in the morning. You go from one hotel to another. And I had never been overseas before. I had never used a passport before. I had never been on an 11-hour flight before. We left late at night. That's the way they do it, going and coming. The flight of 11 and a half hours, about six hours into the flight, someone sitting next to me said, do you realize where we are? Oh, I had no clue. It was dark out. I saw the monitor where this little plane is making progress. And they said, we are at the place of no return. You can't turn around and go back. You're not going to make it. That was a little disconcerting. But I can't tell you how great it was. When we got close to the coast of Europe, northern part of Europe, and you saw the lights along the coastline. I knew we were going to make it. And then when that 747 landed in Tel Aviv, and you see the control tower, and it's the softest landing I ever remember having. We thank God that we landed safely. But have you ever had a situation like that where it was gross a sight for sore eyes? I can't tell you on the way back, Believe it or not, it was a sight for sore eyes. When we got to Chicago, we'd been on the plane for 17 hours. Somebody coughed the whole way back next to me. I was getting sick. But there in Chicago, I got to have a McDonald's hamburger. <laughs> wow, was that a sight for sore eyes? <laughs> How about this? Have you ever thought of yourself and considered yourself being a sight for sore eyes? I remember my dad, he's home with the Lord now. He wore a beard until my brother got off the plane from Vietnam. What a sight for sore eyes, literally. <coughs> Haven't seen someone in a long time, and all of a sudden, there they are, right in front of you. All of us had tears in our eyes. We all saw this sight for sore eyes, our <coughs> old brother Bill, back home from Vietnam. What do you mean, sight for sore eyes? Literally and even figuratively. Can you imagine what it was like for the disciples after Christ was resurrected from the dead? What a sight for sore eyes! And yet, in the midst of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus Christ is speaking to his disciples and saying, You all, you are to be the light of the world. And you all, gathered here today, are to be a part of the light of the world. Picture yourself just for a moment the scene of the Sermon on the Mount. Ruth and I have stood on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. We saw where this sermon took place. But I want you to start not with the words we had today, but the words that came before it. The Beatitudes are what come before this. Listen to what they say. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who thirst and hunger for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Jesus is saying, you are the light of the world, but he's also saying, in yourselves you are nothing. If you read the announcement this morning, this pastor last week said, Christians are good for nothing. He was serious. In our own selves, we have no good. But because of what God has done for us in Christ Jesus, we don't expect to be paid for being good. We are good for nothing. We don't expect anything in return to what we do because of what God's given us in Jesus Christ. It's the beginning of the Lord's public ministry. He has called these disciples and he's going to empower them just like he does us. He could have said to the disciples, you are the candles of the world. Go out. Let your light shine so people will see your good works and glorify God in heaven. I'd like to ask you, how bright are you as a candle of Christ today? We 
must admit there are times we don't shed very much light. Perhaps for some of us, we put our light under a bushel. I remember hearing this in the ministry over the number of years. Someone said to me, Pastor, my relationship with God is very personal. And yes, it is very personal. When it comes to your being forgiven for your sins, it's between you and God. When you come to the Lord's Supper, it's between you and He when you receive forgiveness of sins. But your relationship, although it is personal, is lived out in public. Jesus says, they'll see you and what you do. Without reflecting Christ, we are very, very, very dim. So, the question is, if your life is lived out in public, what is your public? For some of you, it's Facebook. You know that? Social media is hit on around the world. I'm not on Instagram. I'm not on Twitter. But I am on Facebook. Now, you don't see much about me, and I don't share too much on it, but I get on Facebook occasionally. I ask you, what is your Facebook communication like? Is it good news? Or is it bad news? By the way, I really don't need to see you shopping at the supermarket. It's okay. You know, you don't want to see me either. Particularly after I hit a bad shot in golf. You're not going to see me live on Facebook. And I don't think I necessarily want to see you. But what are your communications? What is your public like? What do you post? What do you send out an email? I had fun this past week. I sent out a newsletter article. I sent it out on, on the internet. And I sent it out to my grandkids. I said, grandkids, it was about the article that was in, in the newsletter for the church. It was entitled Let Us. It was kind of a play on the words. Let us pray. So I said, grandkids, send me back some kind of pun based on the article. I got three back. One of my grandsons let us celebrate, which is kind of like celebrate. Another one said, thank you for linking me to Christ. Another one I got back from someone else said, aren't you sorry you ask for these vegetable analogies? Or I will keep peppering you. You get the idea? They read the article. What are you publishing? How about your sphere of influence? I think it's great that Grandma and Grandpa, Grandpa brought grandkids today. The littlest grandkid is still home. He's not that old. Grandma and Grandpa, if you are one, how do you witness to your grandchildren? Parents, you're a witness until the day you die. Matter of fact, even when you die, what people say in the funeral home, what happens in the church, you are a witness. How about your language? <coughs> Secondly, perhaps, we don't hide our light under a bushel, but perhaps we have an unwillingness to change. Perhaps we just can't let go of the past. There's just things in our past that just bother us and we hold that in mind. I wondered, could we identify with St. Paul in that regard? Remember St. Paul, he used to be Saul. There was somebody who persecuted the church. His past, I can't imagine what it was like when he was converted to Christianity. Remember what happened? Talk about blindness and the need of light. Jesus confronts him on the road to Damascus and says, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And there he is struck blind. He does not see for three days. And then Ananias comes to him and says to him, the Lord is going to take away your blindness and you are going to be an ambassador for him. You know the rest of that story. And you know the rest of that story. You see, Christ is the light of the world and he brings life. Jesus says this, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Christ is the light of the world. Matter of fact, John tells us that he came into the world and the darkness did not know him. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. He has overcome the prince of darkness. He left his throne on high and came into the literal and spiritual darkness of this world. Imagine, what was it like for Jesus as a little baby? <coughs> They weren't lighting candles for him then. As a child, he was obedient to his mother and father. And yet he was the light of the world. Jesus Christ was to the temptation. He spoke in the midst of falsehood. He experienced the darkness of Good Friday in order to bring the light and life on Easter morning. Remember what happened on Good Friday? After he suffered, after he beat to the point almost of dying, after he was whipped, after he was put on the cross, 
After he died, there was darkness in the world. There was earthquakes. Again, God was witnessed by his creation about how terrible that day was. And yet on Easter morning, the sun arose and the sun arose. And he sees his disciples and he offers them peace and he offers us peace. It wasn't just life for a day, but life for an eternity. Isn't that why we're gathered here? Part of that is we know that we have the hope of everlasting life, not just this world. Christ's Spirit leads us to let his light shine through us. Christians become sights for sore eyes. I heard this once, I read it once in an article, I thought it was great. To win some for Christ, we must become winsome. You know what that means? It shows in our character. Have you seen Christians who have a holy calm of God mirrored in their face? Or a quietness of God manifest in their voice? A good friend of mine, Pastor Andy Berkey, he's retired now. He still works occasionally. He's in his 80s. He said when he got depressed while in ministry, he would go visit a shut-in. Somebody who was very old. But someone who had the joy of the forgiveness of sins and saw how God worked in their life. From one decade to the next to the next. <clears throat> what do people see in us? It's interesting. The closer to the source of the light, the brighter it is. The closer to the source of the light, there's more heat that's given off. As a young man, about 24, 25 years old, I went to a Lutheran church in Bloomington, Illinois. I was not a pastor. I was a layman. And I remember going in those doors, and after worshiping there a week or two, I said, I don't know what it is they have here, but I want it. And I was already a Christian. I was already a Lutheran. There was something about that congregation that really hit me. I got to know the pastor very well. I said, Pastor, I want to be a good Christian. Here's what he said to me. Do you want to be a good Christian? And I encourage you to act like you think a good Christian would act. Well, that's pretty simple, isn't it? Act like you think a Christian could act. Never forgot that advice. Have you worshipped in a church where you said to yourself, wow, this church has a climate I want? I remember the first time Ruth and I attended Grace Lutheran Church in Knoxville, Tennessee. I was just recently retired. But that church, there was a sense of something going on there that was just unbelievable. It was an atmosphere that was positive. It was an atmosphere that realized that Christ is the only answer for our sinfulness. It's, an, it's one that says, we're here and we're going to go ahead with what God wants us to do. That's not the only church we visit like that. I remember the first time we visited St. John's Lutheran Church in Arnold, Missouri. I got goosebumps. I've been in ministry for 30 years. There was something about it. You know what it was? It was the work of the Holy Spirit working in people. Those who were serving and those who were in worship. I thank God for that. Is it possible for Holy Cross to exhibit the same kind of climate? Or any other Christian church for that matter? Well, what do you think? It is. It is through the work of the Holy Spirit, that gospel of Jesus Christ, the light of the world, who wants to be in our lives each and every day. The closer we are to Jesus, we are closer to the light of the world. The closer to his teachings, the closer to the light of the world. The closer to his forgiveness and body of blood, the closer to Jesus Christ, the light of the world. The closer to experiencing his benediction, the closer it is that it will happen. I'm going to challenge you today. And uh, I didn't talk to Bonnie about this. Bonnie's over. I hope she's okay with it, Bonnie. I think you will be. I want you to take home a Christmas candle. Remember what we do on Christmas Eve? Yeah, yeah thank you. We light candles and we sing Silent Night. <coughs> but maybe we need to have it throughout the year to remind us that we are to let our little gospel light shine in our world. I'm going to take one home. I would invite you to take one home as well. Put it on your dresser and put it somewhere where you'll see it. And remind yourself, God, Jesus Christ, is working in me, and I am to be a light in this world. And let him do that. Starting in March, in the newsletter, we're going to put a little article out. And I'm going to encourage you to think about submitting something. And this is what's going to be entitled. This little gospel light of his. This is where it's shown. 
It could be as simple as, I prayed for Craig and Krista Ryder today. It could be, I gave someone a word of hope today. It could be, I sensed how Christ was with me today. I don't want to be anonymous. I don't care who it's from. But I want you to realize it's Jesus Christ working in you. Sometimes the songs we sing have so much meaning, all of them do, but listen again to the words of one of the verses we sang today. I am trusting thee for power. Thine will never fail. Words which thou, thyself, shalt give me must prevail. This is the little gospel light of yours. Let it shine. Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all human understanding guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, life everlasting. Amen. I've got a test question for Maddox and for Tristan. Are you ready? Now you all can pay attention too. What was in this box last week? Tools. What kind of tools? Bible. Bible. No. Hammer. Very good. Band-aid. One more. What was it? You call it a heart checker. Heart checker. Heart checker. <laughs> what was it, folks? Stethoscope. Stethoscope. But you know, I really like that because the Bible is a heart checker too, isn't it? It checks out. Now, I got in here some stuff today. I'm going to keep bringing this box. Someday I might even bring a pair of shoes. You never know because it said shoe, but not today. If we had a bad storm, okay, and you had to go in the basement or uh, the power went out in your house, what would you need? Candle. Candle. Let me see. You think I got one in there? I think I do too. Okay. Here's a candle. You're right. It gets dark, right? What else might you need? Um, fire. 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 You're smarter than I thought because, uh, <laughs> well, we're going to come back to that. Okay, Maddox? What else might you need? Well, I brought, I brought a flashlight. I mean, you could use a flashlight, right? On. Yeah, what if your battery what if the lightning struck? Yeah, what if the lightning struck your batteries? Okay, very good. As a matter of fact, there are no batteries in here. So this would be no help at all, right? You ever have that happen to you? Batteries are dead, no batteries. How about some water? You might get thirsty, right? I'll have some water. Oh, four, I, I can't afford a Gatorade. Okay. And, you know, you could get cold. You could get cold. This is that hat. All right? Yeah, it's really a neat hat. I'm going to show you something really cool about this hat. I mean, this will really help. Are you ready? Come back here. Come on, Pastor. There. Look at that. Isn't that cool? It hurt my eyes, too. But if it were really dark out, it might be helpful. All right? Then I brought one more thing that you mentioned, Maddox, and that was... What are you going to do first in the dark? If, you know, if your batteries are dead, what are you going to do first? Fire. Yeah. <laughs> These guys are ahead of me. you got to light the match, right? Before you light the candle. Yeah. Yeah. So you light the match. Daddy. Yeah, it's a fire. Let's see if I can do it. Should Happy birthday, fire. too. No, it's not my birthday. You light the candle. And you know, it gives off an awful lot of light. Isn't that beautiful? So we're really dark. That candle will light up the whole room. Jesus says that we are to be like a candle, that we are to share the good news of Jesus wherever we are. So I thought this was really cool because this candle is not just any candle. This candle came from the altar. And we use it every week. And it reminds us that Jesus is the light of the world. And when you get older, I'm hoping you'll come and light the candles for us. Maybe even some older kids back there. Occasionally could Molly, people like Molly, yeah. could learn to light the candles for us because it's a neat job to do. And if you all, when you're out in the world around you, it's an opportunity for you to say, you know, Jesus loves me, this I know. But we're going to sing this song that I don't know when I was a kid, and you know it. Hey, don't you call it my candle. <laughs> Put it under a bushel, no. Don't let Maddox blow it out. Okay? <laughs> All right, great. I'm going to beat you to it. So we're all going to sing this song. You all remember this song? Now, I'm gonna, I'll lead you. If I get the verses wrong, don't worry about it. Okay, ready? 
this little gospel light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little gospel light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Shine it through the neighborhood, I'm gonna let it shine. Shine it through the neighborhood, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. We won't let Satan blow it out, I'm gonna let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm gonna let it